Welcome everyone. We're so excited to have you all here for today's webinar called Everything CK12. We're coming to you live from the CK12 offices here in beautiful Palo Alto, California, in the heart of Silicon Valley. My name is Carl and I'm a member of the CK12 team. And I'm Ryan, also a member of the CK12 team. We're glad that you've taken time out of your busy schedules to learn more about CK12. Before we get going with today's core content, let's discuss a few logistics with the Zoom webinar platform. You should see two different options on your Zoom screen, one for Q&A and one for chat. During today's presentation, whenever you have a question about CK12, please post it in the Q&A window. Our presenter will pause for a Q&A session after each major topic to address any questions that you have submitted. The chat window is a place for community conversation. We'd love all of you to introduce yourselves right now. If you're an educator, feel free to share where you live and what subject you teach. Just to make sure in the chat window that you are sending any general post to all panelists and attendees, and not just to CK12 or the panelists. Also, while we don't anticipate any technical issues during our broadcast, if you are having any trouble with your video or sound, please let us know in the Q&A window or the chat window. Now that we've gone over all the logistics for this webinar, it would be great if we found out a little bit more about you. A poll will pop up in a few seconds. That will prompt you to respond to this question. You can choose multiple options. So we'll pause here and allow you to go ahead and answer this question. We'll wait just a few more moments to so go ahead and put in your answers. All right, we're gonna go ahead and end up that poll. So let's take a look at these results. So it looks like we have a pretty good spread of, of use cases. Some of us have used Flexbooks, assignments and groups and concept-based learning. And then others of us potentially haven't used any of the resources or are, are, are interested in learning how to use some of these resources. So hopefully in the chat today, you can go ahead and share some of your experience with some of these resources. The CK12 Foundation, founded in 2000. The CK12 Foundation, founded in 2007, is a leading nonprofit organization dedicated to improving student learning by increasing access to educational materials through the Flexbook platform and concept-based modalities. CK12 offers free, high-quality, standards-aligned open content through an integrated set of tools for learning, including digital textbooks, concept-based learning resources, simulations, interactive practice, and much, much more. Just to make it extra clear, we give it all away for free. Our core content and curriculum is for middle school and high school math and science, with some K-5 math practice and videos and science texts. However, thanks to donated resources and user created content, you'll be able to find books for other subjects and levels, especially related to social studies and English. Although it's offered for free, when you use a CK12 resource, you can trust it's the highest quality. CK12 is used across the world by students, teachers, and districts because it's the best content, not just because it's free. We visit schools all the time, including those who aren't bound by any budget constraints, and they use CK12 because they know what's best for student learning. Our content has been developed by over 100 PhDs, professors, teachers, authors, NASA scientists, and other subject matter and domain experts over the past 10 years. Our content is accessible. We've worked hard to make all our content available across every platform in both print and digital format. CK12's impact 
around the globe is with over 15 million active users represented in over 200 countries worldwide. One last note before I hand the mic back over to Ryan, people often wonder how large our foundation is. Believe it or not, CK12 is run by a small group of about 35 people in Palo Alto, with a few colleagues working from outside California, including our India office. We're all here because we deeply believe in what we do and are excited to give people all over the world access to free quality content and resources. With that, let's, let's get started and exploring what CK12 has to offer. After a brief introduction to CK12 concepts, we'll be covering the following topics. First, we'll look at Flexbooks, both finding and customizing Flexbooks. Then we'll look at interactives, how to use CK12 simulations and Plex interactives. We'll take a look at adaptive practice, including how our system works and how you can assign practice to students. And then we'll take a look at groups and assignments, both creating assignments and seeing student progress on reports. We'll also briefly touch on integration with learning management systems. For each of these resources and tools, we'll describe the what, why, and where. What is it, why you should use it, and where you can access it. Now, since this is everything CK12, we're going to move very quickly with the goal of giving you ideas of what you can explore in depth on your own. At the same time, don't worry, we'll break after each section so that our team can answer any questions you've been submitting in the Q&A window. Noting that we'll focus on questions that are related to each part as we go. Also, rest assured that we have a comprehensive help desk and support center where you can get quick and easy answers. As you explore on your own in the next days and weeks after this webinar, you can access this information from the help option in the top menu bar or on the side tab that says support. So let's get started with a quick tour of our website. When you go to ck12.org, you'll find an education platform providing standards aligned STEM resources that can be accessed anytime, anywhere, and on any device for free. As you see on the homepage, we offer a number of ways to access our content. You can always search for any content by using the search bar, both here on the homepage or from the top of any other page on our site. You can also browse content by starting with a major branch. Our links include branches of math and science, and additionally, you'll find other subjects for English and beyond. Note that if you've already selected branches, they'll show up as default when logged in. Or you can choose to always see all subjects as shown here as well. If we decide we're gonna go into one, let's go ahead and say biology. You'll see two tabs, concepts and flexbook textbooks. Many people know us for our flexbooks, and you can see those free customizable digital textbooks on that tab. In 2012, we also moved beyond textbooks to include concept-based learning. A variety of resources and modalities can be found under the concepts tab for any subject. Under concepts, you'll see the major headers and you can expand any concept accordingly. If we pick foundations of biology, for example, and then we go into a concept such as acids and bases, we'll end up at the matching concept page. Here you can see different types of resources available, which might include text, video, practice, and Plix Interactives. You'll find additional content by clicking on a specific modality. And I can also go ahead and look at any content that has been community contributed by clicking on the Community Content tab. At any time, if I want to go back to the CK12 homepage, I could just click on the CK12 logo. If we go ahead and scroll down, you can see some other options for ways to explore content. Under Explore, you can jump straight into our simulations for physics and chemistry, our Plix interactives across all subjects, adaptive practice, or materials schools have published on our site. To use these resources, all we ask is that you quickly join if you're new or sign in. Just takes a few seconds, and you can do so using Google, Facebook, or even your own email address. This allows us to keep all of your work in one place in our system while you get full access to all that CK12 offers for free. As you saw, there are a number of different ways to learn any concept on CK12. Every concept has a variety of modalities to help students' needs in the best possible ways. 
These core modalities include text, simulations, interactive clicks, videos, adaptive practice, and even real world applications. That's right, Ryan. This is where our digital flexbooks come in. You can now say goodbye to expensive, heavy, outdated, and overpriced textbooks that you rarely use and say hello to customizable current and interactive books at any time, anywhere, and on any device. So what is a flexbook? Derived from the idea of a flexible textbook, they are designed to overcome some of the limitations of traditional textbooks as well as to reduce the cost of textbooks for the K-12 market because they are easily accessible, customizable, and free. Why should I use it? Anyone, whether a teacher, student, or parent, can simply use the book as is, or if compelled, can delete chapters, reorder the lessons, edit the text, or embed links, practice, and videos. This customization has led to over 150,000 variations of our books on our site. And where do I get it? You can read the entire collection of CK12 Flexbooks on both the web and any personal device. Our Flexbook app even allows you to read books offline, truly making our content available anytime and anywhere. So where do you find a Flexbook to use or customize? If you're looking for a textbook or whole curriculum for algebra, you can pick that related branch. And then click on the Flexbook textbook option at the top. Here you'll see books for related levels of middle school and also high school. You'll see concept books and our original flex books. The original ones include traditional lessons where each lesson covers multiple skills or concepts. And while the concepts books break those lessons into smaller bite-sized chunks, which then correlate directly with our practice and other concept-based resources. You can see we have a few filter options. One that lets you filter by English or Spanish. Also, a levels option, allowing you to filter by basic, at grade, or advanced. We can open up the interactive Common Core Algebra 1 book to start by looking at the table of contents. If you're looking for standards-aligned content, you can also use our standards browser to find Common Core or Next Generation Science Standards-aligned content. This browser will help you identify concepts related to any particular standard, while the standards flexbook search will pull up CK-12 flexbooks that include standards for a particular state, subject, or grade. What's so great about our system is that you actually have the ability to edit content on CK-12 at the level of the whole book, all the way down to the actual text within any section or lesson. We'll use the CK-12 Physics Intermediate book as an example and show you how you can quickly customize it to better address your needs. We'll start from the table of contents for this general high school level flexbook. Let's hit customize to open the editing window. I can change the title of the flexbook to something easily recognizable like physics customization demo that we did for the American Association of Physics Teachers. Click on the blue arrow by the chapter to reveal the chapter lessons. Let's reorder these lessons. Easy just to drag and drop. You can delete any of the lessons by clicking X to remove. Let's see that again. Now, let's edit the actual lesson content by clicking on the pencil icon. This will open a new editing window in which I can delete content I do not want to include and add new content or text here. I can add links to other websites, images by entering a URL or uploading a file from your computer. You can also incorporate other options such as embedding multimedia like YouTube videos using the play button. If I'm ever stuck, I can find support on this page. Then I can save my edits as a draft or finalize for others to see my updates. Once I save, my changes appear right away. You can see there are changes.
My customized Flexbook can be found up in the top in My Library. There it is, the CK12 Physics Customization Demo. And I can share it with my students in many ways, such as simply providing them with the direct URL link to the customized book. You can always use our core content as is, and then you have the option to customize your Flexbook as needed. Also, just a quick note that you are able to adapt and share our content as a result of our Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial 3.0 license. You can find out more about the specifics of this license, including usage and giving appropriate credit on our site or through Creative Commons. We have made it easy for you to see how other educators have already customized our books or created their own from scratch by clicking on the schools icon from our homepage or by the shortcut ck12.org schools. While CK12 is primarily a STEM company, you can still find content related to other subjects both here and in the community contributed tab of any search. This is also a great place to look if you want to find any content that may be more closely aligned to your local needs. Coeur d'Alene School District in Idaho is one of our favorite success stories. Last summer, a committee of science teachers across the district customized CK-12 science books to fit their curriculum needs. With the money they saved by using CK-12's free flex books instead of purchasing traditional textbooks, they were able to purchase additional Chromebooks for the district and other classroom resources to help teachers with hands-on labs. Additionally, simple customization of Flexbooks allowed for localization of the books. Teachers introduced lessons about Coeur d'Alene's lakes and water quality. Suddenly, students are reading a textbook that starts each lesson with how people in their city are applying what they're learning to explore other planets. Pretty cool. Be sure to check out the schools page to find schools around you who are using CK12. And at that point, I think it's a great place to stop and see if we have any questions from our users relating to flexbooks or concept-based learning. So it looks like uh, Marnie asked, how do you check for state requirements? So one of the things that we're constantly doing here at CK12 is trying to monitor what those changes are at the state level, and then also with, with more national things like Common Core and NGSS. And the benefit of using CK12 is these types of changes can be easily incorporated to existing materials. So sometimes, like in Texas, they recently rolled out last year some new requirements in math and the Texas TEKS, their standards changed. And the teachers there, even before CK-12 could get on it, this, the teachers there were updating their flex books to represent the latest changes that has ha that have you know been mandated by um, the legislature so it's to me ck12 is the perfect way to deal with these state requirements which often change and you can just continually to tinker with all the products you, you create on ck12 or if you're adapting products from ck12's books you can make the changes that you need to make we have another question here from Sharon who asked, um, can you put a section back into, into a flex book after you have deleted, deleted it? Right. Ryan, do you want to go ahead and answer that? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen here for a second so we can actually uh, take a look at this. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, share a Chrome window. So we can all see a, a Chrome window here. Um, so let's say, um, for example, uh, like I was working on a, a physical science textbook. So I'm going to physical science, going into to flexbook textbooks, and uh, let's say, for example, I'm working on this concepts for middle school physical science. So as soon as I click customize on any CK12 book, uh, I now can create my own version. So now instead of this, this is going to be Ryan's physical science. And I can go ahead and click save. So now I have my own version of this book. And the, what we're going to do is we are going to get rid of some sections. Just say um, we're looking through this and we decide, oh, I, I, I don't want this history of science. So I got rid of that history of science. And now that section is gone. 
But now all of a sudden I decide, oh wait, I actually do want to have that history of science section. Um, so what I should do is I can go back to that original book. So I want to go back to the, the physical science book. And I can go ahead and I can go into the section that I was interested in, which is the history of science. And this is the section I decided I actually, I actually want to put that back in my book. So if I click here, I can click add to Flexbook textbook. And right here, if I click add to Ryan's physical science book, it will add that right back into my book. It, it typically does add it. So if I go back and to that book, it might not add it in the exact same place. I might have to move it back to the spot where I want it, but that is adding it back into my Flexbook. So now if I go ahead, let's take a look back at my Flexbook. I can see that it did move it back. It, it moved it back as this section at the very bottom of my book. So then what I could do is I can click and I can drag that section back to wherever it might want to go. So I hope that that answered your question okay. Like I said, we can, we can click and we can add it back into a section where we want it to go. So first we want to put it in that chapter. And then once it's in that chapter, we can move it back to any section that we want it to be at. So if we want it to be back at its original location, we can put it back at its original location. All right, Sharon, thanks so much for asking questions. And to everybody who put questions in the Q&A window, just as a reminder, if you want to ask a question, just go ahead and type it in the Q&A window and we'll get to it after our next little break point. Um, but up next, Ryan's going to talk to us about our exciting interactives here at CK12. Yeah, I think we're ready to move on to probably one of my favorite parts of the CK12 website, which are the interactive content. So we've talked a bit about Flexbooks, and now we're going to transition into looking at our interactive content. Teachers can assign our interactives as warm-ups, subject reviews, or deeper explorations within class or as homework using our assign option. And students can use the interactives when they are having trouble understanding a concept or want to explore and interact with an abstract concept in a more concrete and relevant way. So our first interactive tool is what we call Plix. So what is a Plix? Plix interactives enable students to experience concepts in a new and exciting way. Concepts come alive as students explore and engage with them. Why should I use it? There are over 1,100 free Plix interactives that can be filtered by subject, keyword, concept, or standard. And where do I get it? Plix can be accessed via the CK12 website on any computer or tablet that is nine inches or larger. When you land on the Plix browse page, you'll see tabs at the top for our science and math branches. Let's check out one in geometry. This is a geometry Plix that focuses on features of a triangle. The name Plix stands for Play, Learn, Interact, Explore, and that's exactly what students can do with this Plix. You can see in this Plix the description on the left which explains the concept and how to explore the interactive on the right. From here, the students can play around with the interactive and see, in this case, how the circumcenter moves based on the vertices of the triangle. Notice that the directions say to drag the red point, helping the user to know how to interact with the Plix. They can even reset if they want to start over. If the student needs more context, they can click on the Learn More Info Tag option, which pulls up the matching read for that concept. In this case, it's all about perpendicular bisectors. The last major part of each Plix is the Challenge Me questions. You'll see a variety of types of questions from multiple choice to true false, short answer, and categorizing. Remember, this is not an exploration. I'm oh, sorry, this is an exploration, not an assessment tool. You'll sometimes see hints for questions with more than just true and false. Students will have the option to see the correct answer and gain a better understanding of the concept right away. Here's an example of a question there where you have the option of selecting more than one correct answer to show the knowledge needed. And then you can see exactly what you got wrong and you can show the correct answer. 
The last question in the challenge me section is an open discussion question. For ones that match particular discussions already happening, you'll see a link to go to the Plix corner in CK12's cafe. There, students can see answers and discuss with classmates and others, other users around the world. If you're starting from there, you'll even see a link to go back to the Plix itself. In addition to our Plix, our simulations are another form of interactives that boost student learning. So what are our simulations? CK-12 simulations enable learners to discover the laws of physics and chemistry that govern a real-world setting in a fun and interactive way. Why should I use it? CK-12 has a large collection of real-world physics and chemistry sims with worksheets, tutorial YouTube videos, and challenge questions. And where do I get it? In addition to the website, there is a free CK-12 simulations app available for all tablet devices. The best part of this app is that you can access our physics simulations offline using it. Here we are on the Sims Browse page. There are many ways to get to this page from CK12 website, but this web address, ck12.org sim, provides a simple shortcut for your students and your colleagues. You'll see at the top that we have two tabs, one for physics and one for our new chemistry sims that are still in beta mode. These sims are appropriate for middle school and high school and introductory college level. Topical coverage is broad and there are many sims related to earth science, chemistry, and astronomy. In our collection, we have bobsleds, movers lifting pianos, satellites, bowling alleys, trampolines, and much more. All real world settings that are hard to replicate in your classroom. Let's take a look at one of these simulations. This is the prom night sim and is a result of a beautiful collaboration between science teachers, animators, and software developers. Like physic, all physics sims, the prom night sim begins with an intriguing question and advances through a video explaining basic concepts and posing further questions to get students to think about the underlying physics behind a real world scenario, like getting ready for a prom. So here you can see how the reflection is happening with where his eye level is and where the mirror is. After the introduction, we go to the next phase, often referred to as the sandbox. It's meant for users to play around and discover new things. In this interactive environment, you will find sliders for certain physical variables and graphs or responsive animations to illustrate the relationship between these variables. Next, there are usually three questions that could be answered by adjusting sliders, so we call them slider-based questions. Each simulation ends with a set of real-world examples that invites the student to think about the applications of underlying concepts in different physical situations to promote continued learning. Bringing this all together, Carl, I think it's now a good time to take a break and show a quick video clip of teacher Chris Pickens bringing together his use of CK12 Flexbooks, clicks, and simulations in his classroom in Coeur d'Alene, where he uses it to differentiate learning. Sorry, we're gonna go back and do that again. I forgot to share the audio. I apologize for that. Technical difficulties do happen. That's an example of why we do this live because we want there to be some exciting moments just like this to show you that we are really here and not just robots in Palo Alto, California. Um, I see there's one question waiting for us when we next take questions after Chris's um, video, but feel free to jot down any other questions in the Q&A window, and then we'll be glad to answer them right when Chris is done talking. Oh, sure. 
Well, we're going to go ahead and answer that question right now instead, and we'll see if we can get back to Chris a little bit later. Um, so the question here is, can you uh, the, can students access CK12 on their phones? And yes, this is um, we offer full support of smartphones, and that's actually how a lot of students prefer to access CK12 um, with the device that's often already in their pocket. There we have a couple of um, apps that are available um, for um, the Mac, uh, iOS, and also for Android, but of course you can access much of what CK12 has to offer through the browser on your smartphone. You just simply go to ck12.org and most of what you'll find on other devices appears in the um, browser of the smartphone. The only difference is, is that Plix and Sims are not supported because the real estate on the screen is so small. Additionally, you can download an app called uh, the CK12, and this will give your students full access to our adaptive practice. So if you make an assignment, and we'll talk about this in a little bit, but you'll see the benefit of what, what they can access with adaptive practice right there on their phone. So when they're on the bus to a, you know, a football game, or they're simply on their way home or studying at home, they can do their homework with any assignment that you've made about adaptive practice right there through the app. And then they can use their browser to look at the lessons and the reads. So the next question was about how well does CK12 content, resources, and tools play with other LMSs, particularly BlackBerry? So uh, I'll go ahead and I'll share. On, on our site, we actually have the full list of all of our integrations with different LMSs. So I'm going to go ahead and, and, and share my screen and, and see where you can kind of learn about that information. All right. So now we should be able to, to see my screen. So I'm going to go ahead and just go to the home page. And if I go down to the, to the bottom of the home page, I can actually click on like tools and apps and see all of the places that we can access CK12 besides ck12.org. So like Carl was mentioning, we have all of these apps. Uh, we do have integrations with different LMSs. Uh, most recently, we did add a, a Google Classroom integration. Uh, we have Edmodo, Schoology, Canvas, Blackboard, Kidum, a Chrome extension. So we have all these different integrations. Uh, they vary depending on what we were able to do by working with the actual organizations themselves. So my best recommendation is to go ahead and find the LMS that you are using and go ahead and check and see what that level of integration looks like for you in particular. The yeah. other thing I'll say to that is that we are gonna be talking more about the Google Classroom integration in an upcoming webinar. And we're gonna let you know when that webinar is gonna take place at the end of this presentation today. Also, just go to the bottom of any screen on CK12 and you'll see there's a a webinars under support. So just click on webinars and you'll see a list of all upcoming webinars and you'll you'll see that we have them on our new Common Core books and on Google Classroom. We'll talk about all that toward the end. Okay. Finally, um, there was another question here that I was going to answer and it disappeared so that's all good. <laughs> Ryan must have taken care of it. it. Is there only way to access the SIM is to download the app? No. So you can access SIMs through any browser on a tablet or above, okay? So right now, Ryan's going to our homepage and you can see he just clicks on the Sims little circle and you have a browser for all the Sims and right there on his browser, on his little laptop, he has full access to the Sims. So we created the Sim app as a simple way to allow students to access Sims but also to use them offline. So the benefit of the Sims app is you can you can download it while connected to the internet and then like if the student wants to work on this at home and doesn't have internet access they can fully use that sim so it's just another way to access ck12 content all, all right, right. And, and then the, one more question here is that we're um can you give an online assessment and absolutely you can we're going to talk about that coming up in our next section so it's a very good question thanks richard for um posing it and we're going to move on then Great. Thanks, Carl. So uh, like Carl was saying, we're now going to be moving on from our interactive content and uh, we're going to be taking a look at our adaptive practice content. So 
CK12's adaptive practice is a digital tool designed to meet students at their current level of understanding. The system will challenge them with harder questions as they are learning and improve making recommendations along the way, such as text to read, a video to watch, or an interactive to explore. Why should I use it? There are over 150,000 questions. There can be multiple choice, true, false, fill in the blank, matching, highlighting, and many more. Plus, when the student submits their work, you as their teacher receive a report showing the time spent, their streak, and the level of questions. And where do I get it? Students can access assignments and practice online or via the app, which shows them to practice on their own device, whether in school or on the bus to the game. Before I go into any specifics, let me note that there is much to learn about adaptive practice to the point that we've done whole webinars just on that topic. Today we'll be giving you an overview, but you're welcome to see recorded webinars on our page, ask us any questions today, or join us for future webinars to go into more depth. With that, let me show you what it looks like. As you're watching this, imagine how CK12's adaptive practice could be a great replacement for traditional homework assignments in your classroom. You can easily access adaptive practice from the CK12 homepage, but I have included this shortcut to the Adaptive Practice Overview page, ck12.org practice. If I go ahead and click on the View All Practice, I'm gonna be taken to a page with all the subjects that we have practice problems for. I'm gonna stick with the subject of physics that we've been demonstrating. Because I am logged in, there's a percentage next to each concept with a score for a previous attempt. Let's check out a concept I haven't done yet though on Newton's second law. Here's the practice dashboard for the concept. You see some recommendations to prepare for the practice with the read, video, and simulation, and the estimated time to complete the practice is highlighted there as well. If I go ahead and click start practicing, it will launch the adaptive assessment. The first question starts at an easy level and notice that hints are available to the student as needed. If I go ahead and answer that question, I get immediate feedback with a positive message. As you can see, the next question is going to get a little bit harder, and maybe I want to use a scratch pad if I want to do my math calculations. If I can go ahead and close that, I can submit my response, and it will continue to adapt to my responses. But let's say I get stumbled by this question and I get it wrong. I'll still see a motivational message, and if I continue to answer incorrectly, it would be prompted to watch a video or access a read. Having submitted it, you can see that it has tracked my progress so far. The percentage of practice I completed, the time I spent, my best streak as well. If, the, if this was assigned to me by my teacher, my teacher would have full access to this report as well. So if I scroll down, I can go ahead and even review which questions I got wrong or right. It even indicates the level of difficulty for me. So I can see the question I got wrong was actually a pretty hard question. Because I'm logged in as a teacher, it gives me the option to download as a worksheet or to customize this practice and create my own quiz. If I go ahead and click customize, I can go ahead and I can change the title of this quiz I'm now creating. I can go into that set of questions and edit the questions themselves. It can be as simple as rearranging these questions if I wanted to. Or if I don't like a question, I can uncheck it and I can actually shorten the practice itself. Or if say I wanna add my own question. I actually have the ability to do various types of questions when I add a question. I could do multiple choice, select all that apply, true, false, short answer, drag and drop. And I also have the ability when I'm creating this question, I can choose to randomize the answers or not. I can add hints. I can add a solution to show the students. And after I'm finished creating my questions, I can go ahead and save, and this will take me back to the list of questions. You'll now see that my new question that I created shows up at the bottom. I hope you go to this page and actually try this out. Think about your students completing practice problems on their smartphones, or students who are struggling watching a short video or reading a quick passage when they get stuck instead of actually quitting and then they can even try again. For students who are excelling in your class, they're constantly being challenged by the adaptive questions. We have seen lots of 
classrooms using our adaptive practice to help students fill in gaps and learn new concepts. This goes far beyond the old homework assignment or of our worksheet. Teachers love the idea that students get immediate feedback and even possible intervention from CK-12's adaptive practice. With that said, I think it's a great place where we can pause and maybe answer any questions that our participants might have on this topic. Great, thanks Ryan. Um, Cheryl asked a really great question, which is, does CK-12 adhere to SOPIPA under, uh, for students under 13 years old? So for those of you not aware of what that is, it's Student Online Personal Information Protection Act. And this was um, really created to protect our younger users. One of the most important things that it requires is that the um, person, the provider, like CK-12, does not share data with anybody. And rest assured, we have one of the highest standards here at CK-12 of protecting that data. We do not share our data with anyone for any reason. The other part of that um, law is that the the data cannot be used for targeted advertising. And the really great thing about CK-12 is there's no advertising at all uh, anywhere on our site. So remember, see, everything CK-12 offers is for free and you will never see any ads on our site for anything. So we really think that we support our younger students and protect them in ways that are really, really important. Um, can you print the assessment? Yes, you can. And you'll see there are some, uh, Antonio asked about the printing, and you'll see that when you create an assessment, there are options for printing it. And Ryan, do you wanna take the next question? Yeah, sure. So it says, how do you assign SIMS and adaptive practice? Do you, have a, do you have to have a class set up in CK12, and is it incorporated with Google Classroom? So uh, with that being said, uh, you can assign SIMS and adaptive practice directly from CK12, uh, or you can do it from any LMS like Google Classroom. Uh, I'll go ahead and show you how you would do it on our site. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and share my screen. I'm gonna go back to the home page, and let's say I wanna assign a, a simulation, for example. So um, if I go ahead and I find the, the simulation that I like, let's say particular, I wanna do one on like tension and I wanna look at this one about a portrait gallery. So if I go to any simulation, I'll see this big orange button on the top where it tells me assigned to class. So this would be if I'm assigning something, I can actually assign it through a, a CK12 group that I might already have set up. So I have some different CK12 groups that I can go ahead and just click the group and assign, set a due date, and it's as easy as that to just assign something to my class. Or let's, let's say I have Google Classroom. Well, at this point, again, the same thing. As long as I'm logged in with Google Classroom, I would click and I would see my classes on Google Classroom and have the ability to go ahead and assign that right there. And when it comes to uh, adaptive practice, it's the same way. So let's say I, I wanna go ahead and navigate to, to a topic. Um, Let's say a similar topic where we're looking at, at, at something in physics. So if we go into a direction, for example, I'll go ahead and see there's this practice assignment right here. So if I go ahead and I click on this practice assignment on direction, again, I will see this assign to class button. So I can go ahead and I can use that assign to class button. Um, it even appears on reads, on videos, uh, on clicks as well. So anytime you wanna assign something to a class, uh, you can go ahead and click that and that will assign it to groups that you have on CK12 or now through Google Classroom as well. Um, for other LMSs, uh, you, we do have the ability to assign, typically through it's through an app on the LMS itself. Uh, so we had a, an, another question. Carl's gonna take that. All right, so Joshua, um, sorry, uh, Kimberly asked, do you have any information that would work for some students that are learning life skills? So Ryan, if you can go ahead and navigate over to our schools page. So as we mentioned before, CK-12 primarily focuses on math and science, but our partners, which are our districts and teachers and schools, have really created some incredible stuff. So we're gonna use this as the example here, navigate to Texas and then our friends in El Paso. And they're a really interesting case because they came to us several years ago and they developed their science books and then bought Chromebooks with all the money they saved from 
not purchasing science books. And then the next summer they came back and they developed 30 more books. And one of these books here that they've developed is a really great um, book on kind of the basic skills. And they have so many, it's like we have to find it quickly here, but I'll go ahead and find it and I'm gonna paste it in the chat window once we're there. But you can see here, it's a great example where they've just put together so many things. And if you see toward the bottom of their list that they have some some really amazing advanced placement books. And imagine not having to pay $120 for a pre-made advanced placement book when you can actually use somebody else's and customize it to match the scope and sequence that you offer your AP courses. So we'll, we'll find that book and we'll get it in there. But I wanted you to see how El Paso has just done an amazing job. Cheryl asked that when the Flexput says intermediate or at grade level, how could I tell what grade that is associated with? Great question. It kind of depends on kind of where you are, but you know, the idea is, for example, um, with algebra, it can be taught even in eighth grade, ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, depending on the student. So the at grade is going to be the one that is specifically identified under grades. So if you go into the details tab for any of our content, you're gonna see that we have specifically identified what grade levels that is appropriate for. So Joshua asks a good question. Uh, he talks about, do you have a pre-compiled day-to-day curriculum for a particular grade for the entire year covering all available subjects? So uh, Joshua, the, the best thing that I would recommend for you in terms of a, a great place to start is it, I would navigate to uh, any, any subject that I'm interested in teaching. Um, so let's say, for example, I am a, I am a geometry teacher. And a, a great starting point is typically starting with our concept-based flexbooks, just because the concept flexbook is going to be associated with all of the different modalities that we have for those particular topics. So if you're starting with that resource, you would actually have a resource that's attached to interactive content, to adaptive practice assignments, and it would give you kind of the full scope of resources that you would want to use. Um, so we, we recently have actually created some, uh, we're going to go ahead and we'll, we'll just click on our, our basic geometry concept book. Uh, and then if we go ahead and go into that resource, all of these resources here are actually attached to all of the different modalities. So as, as a teacher, when you're actually using this resource, you can easily see the practice that's gonna be associated with every single section. You can assign that practice and that will give you actually assignments for an entire year. Uh, and so that's, that would be my best recommendation as a place to start. Another really good idea is you can use the schools page like Carl was just showing and you can see if there are schools nearby. A lot of times schools take and like integrate their standards into the book as well, maybe even put some more strategies. So that would be another good resource. But I would say starting from our concept based resources is going to give you a full connection of all of our suite of resources that we have and will be a really great place to start in terms of setting up your whole year on CK-12. Our next question, question is, how do you create classes in CK-12? And so we're going to go ahead and answer that in, in an upcoming, we'll show you exactly how to do that. So just hold on to that question. And our final question that we're going to get to right now um, is, I'm an Italian science teacher. Can I use Flexbook in my language? And yes, you can. Let's actually take a look at the lesson that Ryan's looking at right now. It, um, it was... Um, measuring distance between two points. If Ryan scrolls all the way to the bottom of the screen, you're going to see that all of our pages at the bottom allow you to select a language like Italiano. So let's go pick Italian. And immediately, um, that page is actually translated using Google Translate into Italian. There it is. So, you know, we know that Google translations are getting better and better all the time. So hopefully that the student would be able to get a grasp of what it is in order to understand the meaning and get the learning.
Uh, the other thing I want to point out is in a lot of classrooms where different languages are spoken, what I've seen too is maybe they have the English version on their Chromebook in front of them and then they pull out their smartphone and they translate it into their local language, whatever that is, and they use both devices simultaneously so that they, are, they have the kind of knowledge of their home language on their phone, which is reinforcing the other language was being presented on their laptop. So we have a few more questions here, but we are going to move on and we, we promise that no, we won't leave until every single question has been answered by the end of the uh, webinar here. So continue to post your questions in the Q&A window so that we can get to them. And like I said, we won't, um, we won't necessarily answer them along the way, but by the end, we will stay here until every last question is answered. All right, so up next, thanks Ryan, we are going to move on now and talk about groups and assignments. We've recently made some exciting changes to our assignments and reports features. After you've gotten com comfortable with our platform's concepts and adaptive practice, you can use these tools to distribute assignments to students and see their progress. What is it? In addition to sharing resources, you can use CK12 Groups tool to create single or multi-concepts assignments and review student progress. Why should I use it? Teachers can see how students are progressing and tailor their teaching accordingly. Where do I get it? Assignments can be created and reports accessed on ck12.org through any class group. Before you can create assignments, you must create a group. Like adaptive practice, a full exploration of groups is beyond the scope of this webinar. But when you log in and you click on the groups option for the first time, there will be an easy walkthrough. You'll be prompted to add a group name, describe your group, choose a group type. You'll want to choose class if you want to act as a teacher and, assign, and use assignment features. And study groups are more for students or colleagues where you want to just be able to share resources. Uh, you can also go ahead and choose a theme, and then once you have everything set up as you want, you can go ahead and click create a group. And then at that point, you'll have the ability to add students. So here's what a class page, so we make it easy for you to assign any content. Uh, you'll notice across our site, like we talked about earlier, there's always going to be this assign to class button. Uh, this will work with any of the class groups you've just created. Uh, you've already seen this, like we said. Uh, additionally, we have just added the option to assign practice directly from an associated section of a Flexbook. So if you go ahead and you click on that bright orange select option, you'll see the ability where you can go ahead and preview an assignment like someone was asking about earlier, or you can assign the practice to one of your class groups that you actually created. So here's what uh, an example class page might look like. Uh, on the left navigation bar, you'll, you'll see the option for assignments. You can see a list of assignments that I've already created, either using the assign to class option on a modality or, or by clicking on this big create an assignment button you can see in the top right. When you create an assignment from within your class group, in addition to assigning an individual concept, you can actually combine several concepts together. Uh, you can customize and add your own quiz. You can pick a due date or not if you don't want to, uh, and then you can go ahead and assign that to that class group. Uh, if it was a practice or a quiz assignment, you'll see any progress uh, that students have completed in the report section. Uh, but if it's another modality type, uh, you'll be able to see whether or not the student has accessed that particular modality or not. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at what a report might look like. Um, so recently, we actually made some improvements where we were able to use user feedback and, and make this better for you. So you'll see students first and last names, and you'll see your whole class listed vertically. So you can see the most recent assignments at the very top uh, displaying that student progress. If you wanted to see more specifics, let's say, rather than just this overview, um, if you click on an assignment and then the percentage, you'll get this full detailed report like we saw earlier. This has the information that pops up to that student um, right after they finish their practice. So you get to see the same thing that your student is saying. You can really see how they progress with their practice goal. Uh, you can see the number of questions that they've gotten correct, the streaks of the correct answers, the time they spent. And, and if you look, you can even see the breakdown of the, the levels of difficulty of question that they got right and wrong. 
Um, so this particular student did really well on, on some hard questions, which is really nice to see. Uh, and if you go ahead and continue to scroll down that page, uh, you'll see those actual questions and the answers that the student submitted, just like we did when we were viewing it in, in the practice tool itself. In terms of another thing I want to mention is that CK12 has the variety of integrations with different LMSs that you guys have been asking us about. Um, information about the LMSs is going to be found down there in the footer or at, or at this URL of ck12.org slash tools and apps. In terms of our um, LMS integrations, that happens in a variety of ways. Um, if you're using Edmodo, you can specifically assign CK12 practice directly within that system and, and see student progress within that system. If you're using Google Classroom, Canvas, or Schoology, you can assign practice as well as other modalities such as reading selections and videos and see if the students have accessed them or not. And you can even see the scores on how they've done on practices and quizzes. If you're using another LMS with your district that we don't currently support, always feel free to reach out to us at support at ck12.org to discuss the possible options for integrating with us in the future. So whether working within a CK12 group itself or an integrated LMS, you have a number of different options to share resources, assign readings and practice, and track student progress. Additionally, we often say we aim for learning anytime, anywhere. So students can complete assigned practice or quizzes on their phones, tablets, or any laptop or computer. Hopefully that gives you a super quick overview of our groups and your ability to assign work and quizzes both within CK12 or through any LMS. So at this point, let's stop and see if there are any questions uh, that we have to answer. So there is one here, which is a great one, Ruth asks, is there a way to get a student view so that you can tell what they'll be looking at when you assign something, especially in the Flexbook? Well, the good news, Ruth, is that, you know, the views are all the same. What you see is what the students are gonna see. And, you know, that is true throughout our site. We, you know, have a lot of students that come to us as independent learners. And so we wanna make sure they have all the same quality content and access to it that a student does who's being guided by a teacher. So because of this, we've really tried to create a unified user interface so that everyone has access to the same quality content. Um, another question here is, is there any way a program can read to some of the students if needed? One of the benefits of being part of the Chrome browser is there are a lot of different add-ons that are available to help students with vision issues or with um, hearing issues, et cetera. So there are, you can get Chrome, um, extensions which can do a lot of the things to help students with special needs so I encourage you to look into those okay um, we do want to try to wrap this up so we're gonna we have a few more questions that we're gonna save until just um, after this last part here which will be in just a few moments so if the your question, question didn't get answered answer, will you hear it in a second A great way to continue the conversation and network with other CK12 users and get support from our staff is to join a CK12 Cafe discussion forum. From our homepage, you can click on Cafe to see various forums for both students and educators, like the Plix Corner, like you see, saw in today's presentation. I'd recommend that you join Jumpstart for Educators Cafe and keep checking back as we add more state-specific forums. Now that you have been introduced to everything CK12, consider us to joining us for an upcoming webinar. On January 24th, we're doing a webinar on CK12's simulations and Plix interactives. On February 1st, we are going to have a brand new webinar all about the Google Classroom integration. And we know a lot of people are excited about that because there are so many Google Classroom users. Then on February 15th, we have our Flexbook 101. If you've um, gotten excited today and seen really the wonderful possibilities about customizing your own Flexbook, join us on February 15th to really figure out how to move forward on do that. And then finally on March 14th, uh, we are really excited to be sharing all of our brand new Common Core State Standards math books. And these are not just books that we've put together by altering the CK12 original content, but we've rewritten them from a ground up 
the way that the authors of the Common Core have intended the content to be presented. So this is super exciting. And you can move right now to the bottom of the page where you see all the links and go look at some of those Common Core math books right now. As you may have heard, this past summer we ran the first CK-12 Certified Educator Program, certifying close to 400 teachers. Our next full program will be coming this July. Some of our webinars that we're offering throughout the year will actually count towards gaining your certification. In the meantime, if you want to check out any of our archived webinars or resources from our summer program, feel free to see videos of past sessions on ck12.org slash certified2017. And before we end our webinar, we'll encourage you to answer a short questionnaire to give us some feedback on the content and presentation of today's webinars, as we're always looking to improve your experience. The link to the Google form is listed on the screen, tinyurl.com slash ck12webinar17. And it's also, we'll be messaging it to everyone in the chat window. We'll send it to you in a follow-up email as well, just in case. Again, thanks so much for joining us today. I know that you've learned a lot of information and hopefully you're excited now to go continue exploring CK12 and figuring out how together CK12 and you can improve your student learning. Let me assure you that we will continue to be supported by our team here at CK12 because we're willing to help you in any way. All you have to do is send us an email at support at ck12.org at any time. Don't forget to let your social networks know about CK12 and participation in our webinars. We're on all the socials as CK12 Foundation, or you can use hashtag CK12. We would really appreciate it if you could go on there today and share the best part of today's webinar with everybody in your social networks, because it helps spread the word. Well, Ryan, I think that's it for today's webinar, but as promised, we'll stay on for additional questions that we, you'd like our team to answer. Um, to those of you who are leaving us at this point, we really say thank you, and we'll um, look forward to seeing you here again on another CK12 webinar. All, All right. right, well, I wanted to follow up that there is a, I pasted the book into the chat window that the, um, the, the teacher was looking for, that is the EPISD math models book that has a lot of things about personal finance and some basic things about, you know, calculating loans and things. So I think it's a really great book that you can take a look at. And let's take a look at another question. Um, so we talked about uh, student view a little bit. Um, can you import students into a class? That's a, that's a great question. Um, so let me go ahead and, and, and share a screen. Um, I'll go back to my, uh, my class groups. So if I go, uh, I'm on a, a teacher account that I have. Uh, and if I go into my groups, uh, let's say I'm in this, this physics group that I've created. Uh, and I want to go ahead and I want to add some students. So I have a variety of options of how I can do that. Um, a really easy way uh, is you can actually, you can email them, but another really easy way is if you actually, if you just take this class code, uh, and you can use that class code and students can use that class code to join your group. Um, let's, let's go back to that, just so I could show you a couple more options. Uh, you can actually add a student without an email. So that's particularly useful if you have particular younger students who don't have an email address. Uh, and like we talked about, we really value our users' privacy. And so essentially, we allow the teacher to create an account for the student so that they can give them access to CK12. Uh, you could find existing students that maybe you've had in classes past or that are already on CK12. And you can actually send us a whole class roster and we're happy to upload all of your students for you so that you can have all of your students added at that point. I also want to say though, with our integration to LMSs, it's, it's the easiest way to do your rostering. If you have your kids already set up in Schoology or Canvas or um, Google Classroom, then there's no need to add and delete students. All this rostering happens automatically through our great integration with these LMSs. So to me, you know, we offer a variety of ways based on what you have. All right, let's move on to another question here. There's another, um, Cheryl asked, um, she says that she teaches five sections of the same class. As far as best practice, would you recommend making one large group or five different groups? I actually think it's, it's easier to create a group for each class and then making an assignment, you can quickly click like period one, two, three, four, seven, you know, you can click which 
groups you want to have certain assignments. So I think it's, it's, a, it's more manageable if you break it down in, in by period or by specific classes that you have. So um, Sharon asks, do students have the ability to assign to class? Um, so let's go ahead and take a look. So if I'm a student in this class, uh, there are a couple of places where students could potentially add resources. Um, there is a, a Q&A where students could add to the Q&A. They could post a potential link to a resource that they want to share. Um, also, there is the ability for, for shared resources to be added. So here you could actually see resources that were shared by you or shared by others. Uh, another good idea is like if you want your students to be sharing resources, uh, you could actually go ahead and if, if you create a group in terms of if you create a study group, that gives uh, students the ability or you and students the ability to share resources as well, um, if that's what you want them to be able to do. All right, it looks like our final question comes to us from Sarah today, who's asked or who tells us first that her school has blocked YouTube for students. And I know that's a lot of teachers um, have that same issue. And she's tried to assign a reading assignment to my class, but the students were blocked. It's easy to edit the reading assignment and remove the YouTube videos. Absolutely, the benefit of being fully editable is you can go into the assignment and you can change. Ryan's going to go into that beautiful physics book he just put together for us. And he's going to show you how easy it is to customize specific lessons that have content that maybe your students don't have access to. The other option is that you can um, you can add in videos, for example, that are hosted locally at your school, you know, site or in your district. If your district has some other way that you know make sure that they have access to videos that isn't YouTube where the students have access to the whole world. So Ryan's going and showing, making a customized version of scientific theory right now. And you're gonna see down here, there's a, the little a video icon there. He just go, went ahead and deleted it and it is gone. And then he can choose, for example, to insert a new video. And maybe it's from the district's website where you're allowed to post videos and share them with your students all within kind of the confines of your district, however that works. So being fully customizable really pays off for um, schools that do block anything so that the right content gets to your students. All right, I think that's about it. Wow, folks, we really appreciate you um, hanging out with us today and spending the last hour and six minutes with us. And we really look forward to hearing from you. Please reach out to us at support at ck12.org and just let us know how it's going. Like, I'm happy to, um, you know, read anything and find out what you're doing and what's working for you and your students. The whole idea of CK12 is that we're in this with you all about improving student learning and everything's free and always will be because we want to make sure that all students have access to great content all hey, right ryan. ryan i think Thank we're there with that thanks again everybody i hope you have a great rest of your afternoon or evening great. take take care <laughs>